Hey Taylor, um, super excited to have this conversation with you here today. Welcome. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to just uh, kind of start diving in and chatting about uh, your business and uh, uh, using social media. I appreciate that, Kevin. I'm happy to be on it. And like I said, you know, it's, it's always exciting to uh, to chat to new people and meet new people. And uh, there's one thing I, I like doing is rambling on and, and conversation. So <laughs> I mean, I'm excited to chat as well. Awesome. Um, so yeah, maybe before we, you know, get too deep into things here, uh, would love to hear a little bit more about, you know, your business. And, uh, I think, uh, if I heard right, um, you know, this started as like a one man operation and has, uh, you know, scaled sig significantly, uh, would love to kind of just hear a little bit about the journey and what, what you guys do. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, we, so, you know, the business started, you know, way long before I was even born, um, I'm a third generation and do it. Uh, my grandfather was Ken White. You see plastered on, on me everywhere, his name here. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the business started in 1968. He started out with a track loader. Um, he actually started out selling materials. Um, in a, a, I think it was a five-ton truck. And uh, he sold aggregates, gravel, topsoil, and that kind of progressed into owning machinery and, and, and doing more on that end of it. Um, and then over the years, um, you know, he, my father, David, um, he took over the business, uh, in 2000. Um, he started running it obviously before that he, he worked in it his, his entire life and then, uh, skip ahead a little bit more. And, uh, I've been, I've been with the business, uh, for four years now. Um, I've been doing it my whole life, obviously, since I was, uh, since I was born. Um, but four years on paper, paper of actually, uh, running the business now. So, uh, we specialize in, in, uh, you know, uh, anything he heavy equipment related site preparations for both commercial and, and residential. We've got some excavators and some dump trucks and, uh, a really good team, uh, helping us. Very cool. Um, uh, Taylor, are you, are you one of these guys, uh, like myself that, uh, learned to operate equipment at about 10 or so? Yeah. Well, even before that, um, you know, it, it was funny. I was in a, in an interview the other day and, uh, it was actually somebody interviewing because I do the Con Expo podcast as well. And they were talking about right. that. And they're like, you know, like, why do you think you're a good fit for this or a good a good pick? And I'm like, well, I mean, I, I'm, I like being on camera. I mean, I've been doing social media for a while as well. That was kind of my take on the business. Um, but it, more so, I, I just remember growing up on the, on the lap of either my father or my grandpa or whoever was working for them at the time. Um, we, they only had three employees um, for a while. Um, but yeah, I grew up on the laps, uh, in bulldozers, open cab dozers and, and machinery my whole life. So yeah, I've been, I've been around machinery since, uh, before I could walk. So that's pretty, uh, so much the same as you. Yeah. Tell, uh, tell me, do you still have that track loader? Not, not many of those around. Uh, no, there, there isn't. Um, I, I actually am on the hunt for it. Um, if anybody listening, uh, in and around, I'll travel <laughs> for it, uh, has an old, an old case track loader. Um, that would be awesome because right. I'd like to set up a little thing outside of our, our main office with the loader loading. I have an old 1952 Ford dump truck that I'd like, that I'm going to do nice. up. So yeah, no, not too many of those around the skid steers and excavators kind of took over that. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. That, uh, that's actually one of the pieces of equipment I've, I've never been in, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I hear a lot about them and, uh, um, you know, I think everyone would like to have one and would like to rent one anyways, but uh, yeah. you just can't find those things. So, no. yeah, that sounds like a great setup. A hundred percent. Yeah, no, it is a hundred percent. So, uh, actually one more question. Where are you guys located, um, uh, for everyone listening here? Yeah. So we're in the nation's capital, uh, in Ottawa, uh, which is in Ontario, which is in Canada. Um, right. and, uh, we're about 45 minutes West of the nation's capital in a town called carp, excuse yep. me, and, uh, small rural town. Um, it's been, been really growing over the years. Um, this is where I'm currently live here, like in the village of carp. Um, it's where my grandfather grew up. Well, close to and my father actually grew up in a house about a kilometer down the road from me um so there's a, a lot of, a lot of roots here for us and, and our business and our head office is in carp as well um so it's actually really nice to to be around home and you kind of you know everybody kind of that that small town feel but 
close enough to the city so that the work and the demand for work is there. And uh, being in the West End has proven to be a really good thing over the years as far as, um, you know, developments and, and subdivisions and just, you know, the housing boom. Um, it's been really good because we're kind of just on that that outskirts of the of the main city. So that's where we are. Yeah, my uh, my former business, we actually spent a ton of time working in Ottawa. Uh, really? Uh, love the area, you know, love visiting it, love working there. Tons and tons of great people. Uh, nice. The whole construction industry seems super close. And yeah, tons of yeah. demand. Definitely, uh, definitely agree with you there. Um, so, you know, maybe moving forward a little bit, uh, on the on you know the social media marketing side, how how did you get into that? How how did you go from you know being on the lap of uh, your father, uh, you know, in 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 a track loader to uh, you know getting into the marketing side? Well, I'm still on his lap sometimes, you know, in the machines. Are like, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, so about three years ago, um, I remember you know I was on Instagram and I remember creating an Instagram page for our, our company. And, and this is just three years ago. Um, and I remember creating it then. And, and, you know, like I said, I'm from a small town. And I remember people being like, why is Ken White creating an Instagram page for their company? That's so weird. Like, that's so out of the, you know, like at the time, I feel like I'm from a very small town. So you know, people would be like, only girls use Instagram. Why is, why is the business on Instagram? Like, it was like this foreign thing, you know, like, it was like, I did something crazy. Um, and I remember my dad even had that pushback and he's like, what are you doing? Like, and I'm like, well, I think that we should show more of our business. And cause I really believed in it. And then, you know, we kind of toyed around. We had like, you know, 30, 40 followers and we just showed our projects and I didn't really get too crazy with it. I didn't really dive deeper into editing or photography or anything like that. And then I remember I, I wanted to start doing YouTube and I was like, I think that it would be cool to show what we do on YouTube. And I started showing, it was in the winter time. So we started showing me plowing our, our storage facility. And uh, I remember people started catching on and started following us on Instagram. And that started relating over to actual people calling in being like, I saw your guys' video and we want some work done. Um, or, you know, people being like, hey, I, you know, uh, work in the area. I'm kind of looking for a new job and I saw what you guys do online and I want to check that out. Um, so I think it kind of snowballed into what it is today. Um, I don't think there's any secret formula of, of how we've done it, but I've definitely learned over the years its value and definitely perfected the art of basically branding our business um, and creating a following around our business to create something pretty unique um, in in the construction industry. Now, you know, because we're 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 a construction company that's showcasing the services that we provide um, in a in a way that I think is very unconventional to other people. Um, and the fact that we've amassed you know over two hundred thousand followers. Uh, across three different platforms, mainly wow. TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, I mean, I'm hard on myself. So when I say that, I'm like, that's, you know, that's nothing. Uh, like I definitely were keep growing here, but it's, it's impressive when I sit back and think about the mass of people that actually follow us on those platforms. It's super impressive. Congratulations. Um, I appreciate that. You know, it, uh, it gets me thinking you know, back in the days when I had my construction company, which is really is not all that long ago, you know, we're, we're talking like seven years, even myself, I was thinking at that time, you know, you know, about some of the like privacy and do I really want to, you know, show everything online, you know, uh, I'd love to just you know, dial in just a little more. I mean, like you're a, a, a third generation contractor here, uh, and with that is not just, you know, your family and getting comfortable with posting, you know, job sites and your equipment online and, you know, maybe even let's say your secret sauce, you know, sharing with your competitors, some of the things that you guys do yeah. so well that are, you know, make you stand apart, but there's also all of the team members, right? So that you probably got some team members that, you know, are, you know, a couple generations uh, away from yourself as well. And, you know, probably wondering what's going on, you know, just, how did you get past that hurdle or did you just get it going and say, wow, look at all these people are following us and now there's work, um, you know? Yeah. yeah um, 
I don't know. I feel like, yeah, it is. Yeah. I feel like I, I kind of skip over stuff when I talk about it because I mean, like it's been years, right? It's been years to build what we have and sleepless nights, late nights, um, failed ideas, ideas that have worked. Um, the hurdles that you speak of are all stuff. Yeah. That, I mean, I even still deal with today. I remember, uh, it was two weeks ago, you know, I had an employee that was kind of just like, not really feeling being videoed now that like, I mean, I've had a, a videographer and editor now for five weeks. Like, so we've done this up until this point. And just five weeks ago, I've hired an actual videographer slash editor that does everything. So up until then I was doing all the filming and editing on myself, as well as, you know, my role in Ken White construction, as well as a bunch of other stuff on the side. So it was just too much. That was a big hurdle as well. Um, kind of learning how to, how to handle everything. But yeah, like we had an employee that was kind of he was getting more upset with the guy and kind of just had to sit down with him and be like, listen, like, this is what we are. This is who we this is what we do. And if that doesn't kind of align with what you want to do, like, I'm sorry, but we film everything and we're going to show everything. Um, obviously, with respect, you know, sometimes people are just having sometimes people are just having a shitty day. You got to understand that. And that's on my film or understanding like, all right, this guy doesn't this guy's not feeling it today. But yeah, it definitely is. It has a completely different aspect to it as well as, you know, showing our, on our customers' job sites, you know, sometimes I always asking them like, hey, is it cool if we film? If not, don't worry about it. A lot of them are just like, yeah, sure. Like, we think that's great, you know, or they already know about us. Um, so I haven't had really any trouble there. Um, the other thing I get asked a lot is people asking about like safety, you know, like, oh, I saw you guys were doing this on the job site and didn't have hard hats on. Like, is that like, I don't really worry about that stuff because I know that how we run our business is super safe. We have never had a major accident ever. And that's something that, 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 you know, we make judgment calls on. And, and I mean, the main thing at the end of the day is that everybody gets home safe. Right. And, and that's what we do. So people ask a, a lot about that, but I would say the biggest hurdle would be convincing my dad, like exactly what, what you're saying, like, you know, kind of like showing and being super transparent of your business and, showing everything like this is what we have this is the job we have because like if you're in the industry i show pretty much everything you could pretty much figure out you know like how much revenue is a company this size doing and if you kind of know what you're talking about right so it kind of takes away all the secrets i guess conventionally but i've always said that like, i just don't care um yeah it, 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 if people figure out our secret sauce, sure. But the secret sauce is social media. The secret sauce is our culture. And you can't right. steal that from me. You know what I mean? Um, and, and that's one thing that social media has done that's completely, completely reshaped our business is, is improve culture, show culture, and even help me see our business from in a different point of view. Um, and that's just something that people can't replicate. Yeah. I, uh, so, you know, again, speaking from kind of personal experience, when, uh, when I was bringing up that secret sauce, you know, um, a comment, thinking back to the days that I was in, in Ottawa and we had all of these, uh, well, we were doing some pretty big sites there. One of them was like 2,500 acres out in, uh, uh, Orleans, um, you know, estimating was a, a big deal and, you know, trying to figure out how you can efficiently do a job. And, you know, I, I guess where my head would have went is, do I want the competitors to see that this is the machine that you use and that's how you're going to be able to, you know, bid on this job when the contract comes up in four years. But, you know, I think, I think what a lot of us are finding out and, and, and really you guys are proving is, uh, you know, less important to sort of protect the secret sauce and, and you can still kind of protect it, but really more important to show off the work and say, well, we have this job, we're able to do it. We're the best for A, B, and C and, you know, start using some video and social media and, and really showcasing, uh, you know, the work and the brand. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, if you get the job, I mean, people are going to be able to drive by and see what kind of machinery you're using anyways. And like you said, there's, yeah, there's some stuff that, we, you know, we wouldn't have to show, you know, like using stuff to our advantage, like, like winning a bid that's just down the road from us. Well, I think everybody would know that we won that bid based on location, right? It's it's quicker for us to haul back to our yard than yep. the next guy that that priced it that's 57 kilometers away and he's got to haul that material 57 kilometers away. 
Um, I've actually, I've just never thought about that. I just, cause I just don't, honestly don't care. Like I, I <laughs> if you're going to get something, you're going to get it. And for me, there's not so many different things that we could be doing that. I'm like, ah, I don't want people to, to know that this is how we really make our money. And that's how we do it. Um, because I, I feel like right now, the people that are going to win in, in construction are the people that can hire people. So I think that yeah. that's our secret sauce. Like I think the whole secret sauce that you're talking about from my point of view is what we're talking about today and why I'm on the podcast is social media. Yeah. Like that's right. my secret sauce. So if people can recreate that, then sure, then they have it down pat. But a lot of these large corporate companies don't understand how to recreate what we're doing because they're either too afraid um they're too old and, and don't want to change. And they're just like, ah, you know, the, the, they need to step back and like hire somebody younger that gets it to do it. Um, but a lot of people just throw money at it. a lot of these, these large corporate companies are like, I was talking to this guy that I had a chat with a couple of weeks ago and he owns a, a larger size company, um, d- large, more revenue than me. And, uh, he's like, yeah, like, you know, how can we do it? Like we hired this, this, this girl at a university and I'm like, okay, like, does she know anything about construction? He's like, no. I'm like, okay, well, you know, what, what, what did you give her access to, to, you know, for the tools and, and, you know, he's kind of going at it and they spent a, a crap ton of money, but, uh, it's just the wrong type of content. Um, you, you, you have to, you have to get you have to know what you're putting out there. You have to make it interesting. You can't make boring content and think you're going to stand out these days and, and attract people to work because I think there's so much work right now that I don't think that securing jobs is the hard part. I think that securing people to do the jobs is the hard part. You know what I mean? I totally get it. This And when it comes to social media, then, you know, probably part of the strategy is to showcase the people, right? That's showcase, exactly, you know, like, the, yeah. We transition. People, you know, yeah, we transitioned from like when I first started Instagram, I feel like my 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 in my mind, I mean I may not I didn't know this at the time, but I think in my mind I was like I want we need more work. I want to do more money and you know like I want to grow the business and I thought that that was like trying to find work online. But right. the work naturally kind of came with, you know, being a reputable company and doing good work in the area and making good connections and networking and then I, it was soon, it was honestly probably like halfway through, like, like maybe like a year and a half ago or a year ago when the labor, you know, shortage really started kicking in. And I was like, I don't have a shorthand of people. And people were like, what? I'm like, yeah, no, I don't have a hard time hiring people at all. That's when I realized right. like, okay, this is why I'm doing social media. I'm doing social media to show people this is what it's like to work at Ken White. Uh, this is who we are. You know, look at so and so having a good time doing his job, and also being honest. Again, this comes back to what kind of content you're showing, and like being honest that like every day is not awesome. Like here in Ottawa, the sun hasn't came out in like three days now, and it's like kind of right. rainy and dark. And like, man, I'd be lying if I said that morale today is like, <laughs> oh, everything's everybody's super happy and, and great. <laughs> No, man, like today it's like I know that the guys are all kind of like pissy and not all of them, but most of them are kind of like, you know, and like even me, myself, we were just in a management meeting. I can feel it. I'm like, we all need to see the sun. So being honest and authentic in my content is also important. Man, thinking about that, just back to Ottawa, uh, (laughs) we did so much snow removal out there and it would snow for days and, you know, we'd all be gone. We like you just no sleep. And like the one super unfortunate thing about Ottawa was it's so cold that as soon as that snow stops falling, it is just bright blue skies, super crisp, like super sunny. Yeah. I was always sleeping through it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, uh, anyways, yeah, I just remember that. Industries, the industry's hard like that, right? I mean, uh, you go to work now, you know, the time hasn't changed yet, especially it's like super dark in the mornings and you can come home in the dark as well, too. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I think just like as a business owner, understanding like it's OK that every day your employees aren't going to be like, this is awesome and this is great. Because who can honestly say to themselves that they wake out, wake up every day going, this is great and this is awesome. And they leap out of bed every morning. Um, right. I mean, I love what I do. I generally leap to, out of bed. Um, but there's days where I don't want to, and that's just being human. Right. So it's un- understanding that and showing that online that it's like, Hey, this is normal. So 
I want to just take a quick step back. It, yeah. Something you mentioned earlier is kind of resonating with me. And you're talking about, uh, you know, bigger companies, these large construction companies. And they're like, hey, I, I hired a social media person, right? Um, and, you know, I... I'm kind of comparing that to something that I hear all the time of, you know, these enterprise level companies will be like, Hey, I need an app. You know, we're going to invest in innovation. I need an app. But then there's this huge question of why and what, do, what is it going to do? Like, uh, I, I feel like you probably have a whole lot of, uh, uh, whole lot to say here. And we've been talking about it of it's not just as simple as hiring, you know, a social media person. It's, uh, it's that authenticity. Actually, that's something at Dozer. We have, we, we talk about the Dozer way all the time and our founding principles. And one of them is authenticity and not forgetting where we came from, you know, re- remembering our roots. You know, the, there's a reason why many of us still wear work boots, you know, in, uh, in the technology company in the office. Um, but, uh, you know, yourself, super authentic, right? And, and going to be able to bring, you know, some authentic. Uh, authentic content, uh, really share a real story. Uh, I wonder if you have any comments on, on that, uh, frame of thinking. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, I say that's like one of the biggest things that sometimes I'm like, okay, like Taylor, stop worrying about what that, those people are doing. It's like, I get so mad at these large companies, like you said, excuse me, enterprise, large charge companies that just like spend so much money on this massive salary for this person, And then like, maybe that person does have the capabilities and maybe it's not the person's fault, but maybe it's the company being like, we can't show this. We can't talk about this. Like I did an interview with uh, a equipment guy, I think last year. And the guy was like, he's like, how would you talk about, how would you tell these large companies that might be afraid because of the like connections that they have, you know, with other people and the style of content that they can share because, I think, you know, sometimes I can share content that like necessarily like a large company just flat out couldn't make that type of content because they have partners that would, you know, backlash and be like, whoa, like, that's crazy. You guys are swearing online. That doesn't align with what we do because we're in the eyes of the community. Like I'm talking large scale companies like that, right? That they do so much for the community and they have these charities and foundations and like, I I agree. Like, yeah. And like, I hope that we get to that point one day that there's sometimes we're like, and even now there is a transition of like what I can show and, and what I can't show. I do show everything, but content that I was making when I first started, when there was, you know, five employees and we had, you know, like 10,000 followers across three platforms is different than what I create now. And maybe part of that is just me like maturing or growing up or finding our style. But It's like how I explain it is you hire somebody to do a video and your idea for these large companies, because they're already doing doing hundreds of millions of dollars. They don't need more work. They have tons of work. They have work lined up for five years in subdivisions, right? Um, Mm -hmm. So they're doing social media, you know, like classic, like now hiring. And I just laugh. Like I actually just before I got on here, saw a big company that does hundreds of millions of dollars in Toronto. Um, post an ad saying now hiring. So this is a good example. And it's just like, you're doing it wrong. You don't promote that you're hiring. Just, just like show what it's like and the people will come, you know, like obviously yeah. it's good to, to, to show what you're doing, but don't make, and then when you make the content to show it, like, what do the people that you hire? Like, like for me, my demographic, and this is, I mean, I would love there to be more women on our team and everything, but of the guys that watch my content are males, 18 to 35, blue collar males. And so how do I attract more of those guys? Because that's majority of the guys that work for me. We have a really good young crew. So how do I attract more of those people? Um, Because I need people to work. Um, Okay, well, what are they listening to? Um, What do they find interesting? What apps are they spending their time on? So like putting a, 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 a promotional video to some corporate elevator music, um, showing how awesome it is to run an excavator at your company. It's just like, it's not the same. Use the same kind of footage, maybe 
maybe add some comedic stuff into it, but then put like a Morgan Wallen song to it or a Hardy <laughs> or, or I don't know, something more, more, tr- something more that your people that you're trying to show this to actually listen and watch to. That's what I mean by making like different content. You can throw hundreds of thousands of dollars at one video, but if it's boring as shit and it looks like an ad, people aren't going to watch it. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's just different. And like, maybe that's how I think as well, but I got really revved up about it because I'm like, I know how much money you would have spent doing this. <laughs> it's so boring. I don't even want to watch it. So why would somebody look at that and go, this looks awesome. I want to work here. It sounds like I'm sitting in an elevator. That's boring. You're uh, <laughs> I love it. You're, you're essentially, I'm a big uh, field of dreams guy. Um, you're essentially saying if you build it, they will come. And uh, yeah. right. And then the, the other message is, well, if you have to pay for, you know, the ad that says we're hiring, what's in the back of your mind? Well, why are you having trouble finding people? <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, so it, it's shifting gears, but on a similar note, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about a few of these buzzwords. So, you know, this is social media, digital marketing. It's all kind of overwhelming for, you know, people getting into it in the construction yeah. space. Um, how do, how do you think about this, you know, from, Social media, uh, paid versus organic, uh, SEO, uh, you know, all the digital assets. Um, it, what's kind of your thinking about uh, how to handle this? Um, what do you mean? Like, like what's kind of like my, because like when, when you say like, like, like paid versus art. So first of all, I guess the best way to go about it would be totally honest. And I always do this because I sit down with people that are smarter than me every single day. Okay. Like I dropped out of college. I dug holes for a living. I taught myself how to edit. I taught myself how to do all this stuff. My, my thing with marketing is I'm really self aware and I'm really good at understanding people. Like those are my two things I'm really good at. And I'm also an incredibly hard worker. So like I'm not smart, but I work hard. You know what I mean? I've always said that I have work harder tattooed on my arm and people are always like work smarter. I'm like, yeah, well, when you're not smarter, you just got to work harder. So when you talk about these, these terms, you know, like paid versus organic, like I obviously know what you're talking about. And when I first started on Instagram, we did paid ads. Um, I would, would because again i'm self-aware and i understand what people like i would make a video and i would target the people that you know that i think and like people interested in this people that live in this radius and i would boom boom put videos out to them but to sit down with somebody who like went to school for marketing and to talk about the terms that they talk about and like talk about all this stuff uh, you people lose me right because i'm not yeah. i don't understand that that sort of stuff so I don't know. I just feel like I'm not smart enough to answer that question because I don't know about that stuff. I know what works and I, and, and I know how to make really good content. I know how to make interesting content. I know how to brand a business in construction. You know what I mean? Totally understand. Like 100%. Yeah. I feel like you're like, you know, writing my biography uh, as you speak about this. <laughs> yeah. I hire people, people that are smarter than me all the time. Yeah. Like I, I remember yeah. my dad coming into it. He's like, you know, you really need to learn estimating and, and this, you know, the software here. And I'm like, dad, like that ain't me. Like if I do that, we won't succeed. Right. Because right. I'm so uninterested in this and not even that I'm uninterested. If I had to do it, I'm, we obviously got to do it. There's no other option, but I was like, we got to hire somebody who's like the best at doing this and then we'll get really good because I know what I'm good at and I got to keep doing what I'm good at. I And I can't dive down and do something that I'm I'm not good at. Um, but what was the thing you said about digital assets? Like, what do you mean as far as that? Well, I, I, I think I'm, you know, talking mostly about... You know, like this content that we're building today is a yeah. is a digital asset. You know, building up all the uh, the pictures and video and and you know, a, a kind of a question about the content. But I, I think really what I want to ask you is, um, if from your your digital marketing strategy, specifically when it comes to social media, uh, how important is it to have an advertising budget? Do you need a large budget? Do you do you need to, you know? Do paid posts? Is it all about you know organic uh, okay, or good. you know the the community aspect of of social media? Yeah. So honestly, the one thing that really built us off the top was I was throwing money. Like I, I was saying earlier, like I was throwing money at paid ads, and 
I was, you know, like I remember I'd throw, I had like this, this certain group that I already like went in and, you know, spent like three hours one day and selecting like, you know, people from this age to this age, um, you know, your gender, where do they live, towns, interests, behaviors, what stuff do they search on their time off, um, interest, hobbies. And I had like, I would put like a hundred bucks on each one I'd post and I do like one a week, you know? So maybe I was spending 400 bucks a month on paid ads. Um, but um, as far as, you know, a budget wise, I guess I was doing 400 bucks, call it a month for probably a year um, to, to build up Instagram and to drive traffic to my Instagram page. But I didn't know what I was driving traffic to do, right? I was just like, oh, I, I want more work. Um, and, and in essence, I guess it did because it drew more eyes to us. But I feel like somebody who would have more of a specialized background and actually doing that would do a better job of it. But as far as like people throwing money and stuff at it, that's what I mean. Like you could spend $400,000 and put a $400,000 budget on marketing, but somebody who really understands, like I'm talking about just my industry, like just construction yeah. industry, our industry, like somebody that really understands our industry and also can like understand like, what do people like watching? I feel like could beat somebody with an, just an iPhone versus the people that are spending $400,000. You know what I mean? For me, it's really important about the style and type of content. Like I like, you could throw a big budget at it, but the guy with just the iPhone that gets it, that understands it more, understands the industry more, is he's going to win over the guy, over the people with $400,000 budget. So it's not so much about the money for me. I just think it's like, it's again, like I, I've said it so many times, I, I sound like a broken record, but it's the, it's the type of content you're putting out. It's so important. That's what I would stress if I was a business, like listening to this being like, how did Ken White, how did they grow and how should I grow online? My biggest piece of advice is like, make good content and get somebody that understands that in your business. Love it. Amazing yeah. advice. Yeah. Um, let me ask you one more question on the yeah. uh, on social media. Um, are there any big trends coming? Any anything you see? Um, well, one thing that we like doing, um, and I guess this is something like, yeah, I don't share enough of it. It's not like it's secret sauce, but one thing that we're really finding right now is like creating our own audios. Um, so, like on uh, Instagram Reels and in TikToks you have audios, right? And people save that audio and they can create their own TikTok with that audio or Instagram reel with that audio. And it drives traffic to you because your name's in it. And like people can go to the original sound and they see you. So like last night, for instance, we posted a TikTok and it's to a song by Chief Keef. It's called Love Sosa. But at the beginning of it, um, I'm like, we have so much work ahead of us and not enough, not enough time to do it. And then it goes into like these bitches love, love like this, this song that's like hits really hard and the footage was good. And this morning I woke up and we had like 310 audio saves just from that and 111,000 views on the TikTok. Um, oh, wow. and, and that is, and that is something that we're really doing. So I would say as far as, uh, as far as trends, really short form reels, that's all going. But as far as like a really good campaign to be like, oh, like what's working? What's really driving traffic is coming up and doing your own audios, creating your own audios and getting people to save those audios and create their own videos from your audio is something that's that's really big right now. It's important, actually. Well, that's what a lot of like uh, record labels are doing with their songs, right? They're releasing them on TikTok first and then sending them to creators and influencers on TikTok and be like, do, do a dance to this or make a video to this. It becomes mm -hmm. popular. I mean, so many songs that we all listen to in, in, our, in our, our day to day now come from actually they started on TikTok. They were viral hits. And then now they're on the radio. Um, so that's kind of what we're, we're recreating, but in our little world. That's an awesome tip. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be obsessed about that tonight, probably, <laughs> you know, wide awake thinking about it. That's yeah. A, a, yeah, definitely a cool idea. Yeah, um, it is. Hey, uh, so stepping away from social media, uh, anything else on the tech side? We saw you were in the news for uh, uh, using the 2D uh, grading system on some of the CAD excavators. Yeah. Uh, uh, anything else cool happening out there that we should know about? 
Uh, no, I mean, I'm really interested to see where this whole electric thing goes. I know Bobcat has that electric skid steer that yeah. runs for three hours and then charges for 10. <laughs> so, so I don't know how amazing that, <laughs> how amazing that would be on the uh, utilizing that. But uh, the electric stuff, I'm definitely interested in seeing uh, the grade systems um, and, and, you know, Trimble 3D GPS, uh, you know, like Leica and Trimble. Um, they're constantly pushing the boundaries. Um, I'm really excited to see, doesn't affect me at all, but really excited to see a lot of AI stuff um, yeah. as well as a lot of uh, remote control um, stuff. Uh, which is huge right now. There's a lot of large construction influencers that are pushing that right now. There's a lot of money behind it because it's a tech business and the construction industry. Um, and a lot of tech companies and software companies are seeing the value in that um, at a place like a large mine or something, not so much showing up to Joe Blow's backyard to replace a septic system like us, but a monotonous, this rock truck is going to drive from here and it's going to go to the crusher and all day, you know, 10 hours, 12 hours a day. And, you know, and then as we get further AI, you could go 24 seven. And so that's a really cool front that I think people should really be watching. And I'm still waiting to see like a true leader in that. Um, I feel like yeah. now it's just kind of like, you know, some clips here and there about it, but that's really exciting for me to see as far as the industry and then seeing how that relates into like what we do. Um, but just seeing how we're kind of getting away from, you know, like like a lot of AI remote control and then as far like alternative fuels, you know, like what are we doing? Like, can it be cool in five years from now if, you know, you could run a and they're going to start with the mini equipment first. Let's say a, a six or seven ton excavator for 10 hours and then it charges overnight and you're good to go because um, fuel is insane. So that's a huge thing on, on us right now, especially even the pickup trucks like the Ford pickups. I wish I ordered the the ford lightning like a bunch of them when they first came yeah. out because now the waiting list is so long but like that would be awesome because it feels so crazy right now so i guess f finding what really interests me as far as the technology is finding different ways to combat the issues that are in the world today inflation uh job shortages um uh, rising infl uh, inflation and, and price of fuel and everything yeah great uh great summary you know i think about those bobcat uh uh, skid steers have come a long way. Uh, yeah. I used to do a whole lot of uh, uh, trade shows. This one called Canada Blooms, and uh, you know, be inside for three hours with a diesel engine, you know, kind of belching at you. That you're pretty happy to have the, the three hours of clean air, right? Um, yeah. There's a there's a lot happening, uh, and and then on the the autonomous vehicle side, I always wonder about uh, about snow removal. I know you're also into snow removal as well, like. Is there a day that we're going to be able to have autonomous vehicles clear parking lots? It seems fairly obvious to me that you can set up a, a geo fence and, you know, there's yeah. already uh, um, uh, telematics in these uh, in these tractors ready to go. So um, exciting times for sure. Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, the only thing that I could see with that is like, would that help? my insurance or hinder my insurance you know like that's like our that's <laughs> the biggest thing with snow removal right is is, is the insurance yeah. uh the slip and fall claims so like i don't know does ai having ai would they be like all right well i mean because computers are smarter than us but maybe they don't have like that real feel you know that a human has so that would be right. interesting to see too like what they what they would do with the insurance rates um, taylor this has been awesome um you know, I, I think maybe I'll just uh, thank you for being on our uh, Builders Builders uh, Building Builders co podcast. Yeah, uh, and uh, how how can people get in touch with you? How can they find you? Anywhere, uh, Ken White Construction Instagram at KWC two thousand, uh, TikTok at KWC two thousand, YouTube Ken White Construction. Those three things. Other than that, that that's 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 where we are. That's where I'm mainly at daily, every single day. Awesome. Yeah. I encourage everyone to, uh, to, to check it out. There's a lot to learn, uh, lot to learn over there about branding and social media and, you know, just good, uh, good practices and happy, uh, happy team members. So, um, thanks again, Taylor. We really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for having me on, Kevin. <laughs>